It's Owen from Real Social Dynamics. I wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas from here in Los Angeles, California. And today's video is gonna be on the topic of insecurities. And I don't know, I just thought that was a good topic. This was a very, very powerful session for me at the end of a very long seminar. I was on my last legs and a guy who'd been through a lot came up to share what he's gone through in his life. And in my opinion, it was sort of a moment of clarity for everybody in the room because it really put into perspective that there's nothing ever to be insecure about. So to me, this guy was a real role model and this was a very special session for me. I also want to just add a little bit about the holidays in general. In my opinion, the holidays are a time of year that people make a choice collectively to say, you know what, we're gonna get out of the low pain and craziness and disputes that sometimes we live our lives in, anxiety, things like that, and we're gonna go into a higher space. And sometimes that higher space could mean things like reaching out to people who you might have disputes with, even if they don't care about it and don't reciprocate it, or coming together with people who you care about and letting them know how much you care about them and appreciate it. So much of life in general is first world problems and we as people can lose perspective of things and we forget how good things are. It's kind of crazy how that happens. The world's amazing. Your life's amazing. It's a privilege just to be here. So the holidays are a time to share positivity both with other people who you normally share positivity with but even people you wouldn't normally share positivity with but also a time of gratitude. Okay, It's a time collectively when we make a decision to come into a higher space. Thank you so much for watching these videos and supporting Real Social Dynamics. It means the world to me. Happy holidays, a happy new year. Hope that you have an amazing time. I wish the best for you and your family, and I'll talk to you soon. The hotter the girl, the more paradoxically secure and insecure she is. She's, in many ways, more secure than a man will ever be because she has that knowledge that no matter what happens, she'll be okay. Some guy will come and save her. She knows that in, in her soul. She knows that. She gets that. So for that reason, in many ways, she has more of a grace and easy confidence than any man will ever have. But on the flip side, I don't care how hot she is, she hangs out with friends that are hotter. Okay, so if you take, for example, my girlfriend, my current girlfriend is a playmate, and there's a lot of playmates over at the house. There's always these like really well-known playmates running around my house all the time, usually naked. And what you see is, well, not you, maybe not usually, <laughs> but not uncommonly naked. They're trying on clothes, they're doing photo shoots, things like that. And um, what you'll notice is every single one of them is missing certain assets. So, you know, my girlfriend, she might be looking at her friend's natural tits and being like, oh, I've got a great boob job, but look at her tits. But then that friend is like, well, yeah, but, but she's taller. And then the other one's like, she's skinnier. And the other one's like, she has a better ass. And then it was like, she has better cheekbones. And then it was like, she has more natural hair. She's more tan. It's like this rigmarole of them wishing that they have these things that other people don't. It's really, really common, right? In my mind, I'm just like, look, I'm confident in myself. I'm going to fuck all of you. <laughs> so, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a pasty ginger, and um, I, I learned, the, I found the PUA community, so, yeah, <laughs> get in line. <laughs> I think I'm awesome <laughs> because I hypnotized myself in a seminar <laughs> to think that. So... <laughs> Pretty weird, right? So essentially, they feel that. So the girl, like for example, a lot of the playmates, what do you think makes them the, what do you think burns them up? Perfection. They're not runway models. Huh. LA models, they're not New York models. It really eats them up. Not all girls, some girls don't care. I mean, think about it. Yeah, you're a playmate. Yeah, you're getting shipped around on private jets and all this different stuff from all these people pandering to you. But you're not making $50 million a year in sponsorships like a Victoria's Secret model. How do you think they feel about that? And many of them want to cross over into runway. What do you guys like better? A five foot 10 skinny pole runway model or like a five foot seven girl with a, with a tiny waist but a, but a fucking fat ass and fat titties? I like the latter. I've had sex with the runway model girls and it's like you're fucking a tarantula, you know? It's pretty crazy. Maybe, you know, maybe someday I'll wind up with a girl like that, right? Love conquers all. I'm not saying that's not pretty cool. It's pretty fun. If there's anybody here from New York, a lot of you guys are conditioned on those girls. Are you from New York? Yeah. And are you more into like the lanky runway girls? No, I like the cute adorable. You like the cute adorable, okay. But a lot of guys, like when you live in New York, like when I was in New York, like I had, I had a, a, a RSD student at a free tour and he's a DJ at a hot club. He's like, dude, all the girls are over six feet. Right, and uh, so so I was like, what? What does that mean? Like, is it an Amazon, like man woman convention? Like, you know, he's like over six feet, right? Probably with, with heels, he means. But you see the idea that um, 
that in, in New York, you know, the tall runway model girls, that's the thing there. So maybe that's a guy's taste there, right? Now, those tall runway girls, how do you think they feel? They feel lanky and gawky. Too tall. Too tall. So everybody is, it has an insecurity. Guys that are six feet are usually burned up. They're not six foot two. Guys that are 5'11 are always pissed they didn't quite make it to six feet. They're like, I'm almost six feet. I almost made it. <laughs> Guys that are 5'5", five five, hear me at 5'9", calling myself a short, balding ginger, and they're like, who the fuck are you to call yourself short? Do you know what I would give to be 5'9"? You fucking prick. Running around the internet calling yourself short? Fuck you. I'm 5'5". Five five. There's guys at 5'2", that would cut a finger off to be 5'5". Five five. <laughs> now there's guys that are 6'6", six six that wish they're 6'2". There's guys that are 6 feet that were really popular in college, but they always noticed that their buddies that were 6'2", got a little bit, did a little bit better with the girls. Everybody feels that. Look, okay, straight up, like the balding thing, when I realized I was starting to go bald, I'm going really bald, check it out. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay, so I'm going hardcore bald. Like, my head will have to be shaved soon. Weird, okay, to me, I would actually shave my head now. Like, I'm thinning enough that I, I kind of think I should just bick it. I, I look good with a shaved head, I've tried it. But here's what's funny. No girls ever realize I'm going bald. I don't know how the lighting's like, like it depends on the lighting you catch. Okay, like I usually shoot my videos front lit, but any time that I get back lit, I look like Krusty the Clown. Like my side hair's all thick, and you can't even see the hair in the middle. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> First time I saw that, I was like, god damn it. I was like, I, I, I joked that I was a balding ginger for so long, and now I'm a balding ginger, I'm a bald ginger. So, it, it fucks me up a little bit. Like I'm losing my hair, whoa, right? Like, whoa, I'm losing my hair, and yet, no girl ever says anything about it. No girl ever calls me short. It, it even used to happen back in the day when I'd be getting a shit test before going to sleep with me. But even as I progress, I get less of that. Have you guys ever, let me ask you a question. You ever had it where a girl, they start talking about cute guys in front of you and it kind of like, it's like a knife to the heart a little bit because you feel like you're not a cute guy. And they're like, oh God, that guy's not even cute. Or like, we're going to meet some cute guys. And you sit there and it kind of fucks you up. You ever felt that? Who yourself ever felt that? Put your hand up. Okay, I felt that big time, like you fucked me up. So what I realized is that when you are just secure with yourself, you're a cute guy. Like it's like a different standard. Take Jeff from RSD. Do you guys know how tall he is? He's 5'7". Do you ever think of Jeff as 5'7"? No. Who here follows Elliot Hulse at all? Who here saw a video, the first ever video with me standing beside Elliot Realize that we're the same height and it like fucked you up for a week. <laughs> so many people were like, like he was even in the comments like, I thought Tyler was short. How the fuck is he as tall as Elliot? Could you ever imagine Elliot being less than like 19 feet tall? <laughs> when I found out that Elliot was my height, I was flabbergasted, okay? Every time I saw him in a video, I thought I'd be meeting this guy that was like six foot four, was jacked, I mean, well, he's jacked as shit. I mean, that didn't change. If anything, actually, when I met him, he was like even more. Frankly, when you watch that guy lift weights in real life, it is like watching a specimen. Like, it's not even a human. It's like watching this, this like creature from another galaxy. Like, you know, he calls himself the king. Like, you can see where he got this idea. It's the weight room. When that guy's in the weight room, he is the fucking king. Like, when he does like, like backward pulls, like, it looks, it looks like this. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know how to describe it. It was like watching greatness in a, in a pool. Like he was like, he was just, like you just like see like these like muscles just like that. And I've seen big jack dudes in my gym. Like I've seen big strong guys in my gym. I've never seen anything like this in my life. It was a peak experience. Like seeing Elliot just do a backwards pull was one of the peak experiences of my life. <laughs> it was amazing. And did you guys ever see the video where he went in my crowd for a bit and then he got them all pumped up? That was another peak experience. I've, I've been a fan of Elliot's for years and years, right? So it was like, it was like, get, like watching Elliot like in my room, like being like, Rah! like that, it was just one of the best experiences of my life. You know, I was looking at, at my buddy in there, I was like, this is so cool. It's like, who would ever imagine this adventure would lead us here to Florida with this like wild man running around like, ah! like that. It's so very fun. So, you know, in life you always have these peak experiences. It was a peak experience for sure. So, basically, um, 
You know, he's a really powerful speaker. Some people love Elliot, some people aren't into his stuff, but what I really get out of it is this power in his speaking that I, I really admire. He's very free flowing, he knows how to kind of tap in, to channel, to speak with power and conviction. That's why he has a lot of fans. So even if you're not like into his stuff, be open-minded to it from that perspective, you'll get so much value. Let alone if you actually look at his stuff, which I think is amazing. So, um, what was I saying about the Elliot? Oh yeah, the height thing. So, you'd never think of Elliot as short because he owns it. So when you own it, that negative quality, not, I, I'd like to say it ceases to exist. I wouldn't say it ceases to exist, but it ceases to be really relevant. It's not as big of a deal. When you own it, it's not a big deal. When you don't own it, it's a problem. Like if you're, if you're balding and you don't own it, you're fucked. What's a good example of you care. Yeah. There's not an example. You either care or you don't. The self is always coming through. You always know when someone's a little insecure. Most short guys, in my experience, are pretty creepy. I generally find short men to be creepy. But it's not because they're short. Why is it? They're wounded. They're fucked up over it. And yet, if I were to pick the top 10 most comfortable with themselves guys I know, and also, the top guys in game, they're almost all short. <laughs> because what shortness does, look, being short is similar to like, say, coming from the ghetto. Most people that come from the ghetto, it fucks them up because there's a lack of opportunities and it's a negative cycle they're stuck in. It's very difficult. But some people that come from the ghetto, what do they wind up doing? They wind up just crushing it on a world-class level. So if you're short, you're gonna go in one of two directions. You're either gonna be the short guy who it fucks them up and it makes you creepy. You're like that creepy short guy because you're fucked up over it. Or you're gonna go in the opposite direction where you have no choice but to, to come at peace, you to completely accept yourself from top to bottom, to love yourself completely. And then from that point, you're more comfortable with yourself than people who have the advantages. So you've gotta make a choice which direction that you're gonna go. Like me coming from a, from a grown up, or, or me growing up in an environment with say, light level autism, and now that's very distinct obviously from somebody who is very, very autistic. But coming from a background with light level autism, there was only two directions it was gonna go. It was either gonna go that I was gonna struggle socially for the rest of my life, or I was gonna be forced through evolutionary pressure to push myself to understand it better. And what was funny was I remember back in the day, I'd be like, wow, it seems like women and gay dudes just understand social dynamics better than any man ever could. You know, and occasionally there's a couple men that really get it. And then as time went on, instead of me asking gay dudes or girls for advice on social dynamics, it got to the point where I felt like I understood it better than they do. And then it got to the point where I felt like I understood it 50 steps ahead of almost anybody at a high level because I was forced to understand it. Now, it doesn't mean I always get it. doesn't mean I'm always right. And it certainly doesn't mean I don't ever fuck up. I mean, I definitely do. But I, at least I know what I'm doing wrong, which is nice. You know, there's like, it sucks when you fuck up, but there's comfort in knowing what you're doing wrong. It's like you attend this event, you may not do it perfect, but at least you know what you did wrong rather than sitting there in this like spaced out state like I don't even know what I did wrong, fuck. So that's kind of nice. So notice here with being secure with yourself, it's absolutely critical that you, that you keep improving yourself. Like if you're out of shape, like okay, take yourself, you're overweight. Yeah. How overweight are you, what do you weigh? 310. Okay, 310. Can you make a promise that next year when I come back, you will have dropped what do you want to drop in one year? Don't say something crazy. First question is, are you ready to drop? Yeah. The reason that you got to drop is for your health. Yeah. Okay. How much do you want to drop this year? Uh, probably about 60 pounds. Great number. I like that. You know why I like that? What? It's not some bullshit. Like, I'm going to drop 900 pounds. Like, you know, it's just shut the fuck up. 60 is a good number because that's about um, a pound a week. It's about a pound and a quarter a week. I think you could do, I'd, I'd go 80 to 100 if I were you. Oh, uh, I'm gonna be in the Navy the next couple months. Okay, so no chance of that. Okay, you're like you're not in full control of your like diet and workout. Oh, I am. Okay, then could you? Yeah. Are you saying because you're gonna gain muscle? No, like I, I, like six months ago, I was about 60 pounds heavier. Got it. Okay, so, so you're on that pace. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so here's what I would say. So, look at a guy like Luke. Luke is fucking the hottest girls, and he's overweight. So it's not stopping him. So what you want to do is you want to keep improving, but you want to accept yourself completely 
while improving. The frame is I'm already super awesome and I'm becoming even more super awesome. I'm already perfect, becoming even more perfect. A plant that's growing is already perfect as it is, as it's growing. And it's just gonna continue to blossom. So you wanna be completely secure of yourself, not give a fuck. Look at a guy like Luke. I'm out of shape right now. I'm out pimping. But at the same time, you wanna be continuing to improve. That's your general frame. You wanna do that with everything, but some things you can't fix. Bolding, unless you're gonna go on, say, Propecia Rogaine or things like that, or get a hair transplant, you can't really fix. Maybe fix your diet or your stress, but you know, there's only so much you can do. Balding's balding. Height is height. You can, wear, you, you can wear shoes with liner in it and a taller heel, and I'd recommend that. Why not? Fuck it, right? Why not? But at the same time, you can't do anything about it. Other things you can do stuff about, like what, what shape you're in and your style and fashion. So you can always dress better, right? Like, you know, you could, you could layer. You could wear, a, you, you know, I got a pot belly, but I have a layer and a scarf and a beard to cover my chubby cheeks. And a micro jacket. Then a cool jacket. <laughs> so you can dress well. You can dress in a way that, that looks good with it. Actually, I, a lot of time I, I do it like this because I just like the different layers in the shot. But funny enough, it actually winds up making me, you know, like the girls never think I'm chubby right now. So notice that you can dress in a way that's to your favor, and you should. You can improve yourself in a way that's to your favor, and you should. But don't wait to start getting laid. Accept yourself completely now because the problem is, here's the key, your mind has synaptic pathways that are always growing. Everybody get that? If your brain's always growing new synaptic pathways and your synaptic highway is growing, a synaptic highway is, I'll feel better about myself when. I'll feel better about myself when. I'll feel better about myself when. You're building that pathway. If the pathway that you're, if, that you're building to, I feel good about myself now, is a dirt road, it's a shitty dirt road, but there's a fucking super highway to I'll feel good when, and there's a, a shitty, treacherous dirt road, like a little thin, crappy synaptic pathway to I feel good now. Once you reach your goal, how is your brain gonna have been reshaped neurologically? You won't be happy. You'll get the goal, and then you'll keep wanting more. The, ask any of the playmates, did you think you'd finally feel secure with yourself after your first Playboy cover? They all say yes. You say, did you? They say, weirdly, no. Did you think you'd be secure with yourself after your fifth Playboy cover? No, I did. Did it happen? No. Did you think you'd be secure with yourself after you got the best boob job? I really did. And do you feel secure? No. It's because their brain's been reshaped. They have the mental habits and the synaptic wiring in their mind to not feel good now. So feel good now, say you weigh 310. Feel good now, shape your brain to feel good now Start going out and get laid now, and then when you get in better shape, it's all gravy. You're playing with house money at that point. Yeah. Quick question. Uh, just a comment. Loud? Okay. Loud. I was kind of born with like a one in a million disease kind of Louder. Thing. And I, I- You might have been born with a disease, but you can still speak loud. Okay. Stand up. Go, eh. Eh. Is he stifled? Yes. You don't need me to bring you up here, do you? You know I do that a lot. Yell loud. No, no, stand up. Yell loud. So is normal yelling? Eh. Eh. He's getting there. Show me. Otherwise, i got to bring you the front. So you take your pick. Eh. You're getting close. You're almost going to avoid the front. Eh. Last one. Louder. Eh. All right. Give me a hand. Eh. So you had a one in a million disease. Yeah. And I always How much better does he sound right now? And I, Should he keep this new identity in voice? Yes. yes! And I always had to feel like, since this is not something I can change, and I have to be in peace with it because like, this disease fucked up like my movements. Like I couldn't get upstairs when I was in kindergarten. People had to like carry me up. Okay, now, and, and by the way, let me make a, a couple points here. Does he look at peace? Yes. 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 Does he look like a happy guy? Yes. So you're, so how funny is it to you to hear some guy whose hair is thinning or isn't quite tall enough crying in self-pity when you had to be carried upstairs at a young age, so vulnerable and innocent you didn't even know what was happening? What does it sound like to you when you hear that? I bet you, you don't even judge it in a negative way, but what does it sound like to you? It sounds ridiculous. Ridiculous, right? Like, because I had to do like 300, 400 squats a day for years just to develop my legs so that I could kind of get upstairs. Okay, so let's pause. He had to do three to 400 squats a day to get up a stair 
Most guys complain that they have to go to the gym to get girls. <laughs> I got to go to the gym to meet a girl, right? Even though you don't even have to go to the gym to meet a girl, but you know my point, right? Yeah. It's like, and he's got to do three to 400 squats a day to get up a stair. What you take for granted to walk into the room for him is a gift. Continue. Yeah, when I was a kid, that was like the biggest issue. Like, of course, children are mean, so I was being called Robocop, Mr. Robot, oh, the weird guy that can't walk is always like freezing, the stage fright and everything. But after a while, it was kind of funny. I, I started thinking about it like, since I have this disadvantage, I kind of have to work hard because the people that were already given, like the height, the good genes and everything, they kind of don't have to work and maybe they're good at it naturally, some things. But since I always had to work for this one thing, I felt like I had to work for all the other things in my life as well. So it was first like the academic career and after I accomplished some things there, next it was the social skills. And I kind of got, got a little traction because beginning of high school, I couldn't uh, look at a girl. I would always go like this. But after a few years, everybody would start asking me like, how did you get, like it's these more social. And like, by the way, here, come to the front for a sec. Come to the front. I just want you to, sh I want everybody to be able to see you clearly. Come to the front. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. The loud, loud. The reason I brought you is I want you to share loud. Okay? okay? Show me, show me this. Okay, again, because it's important. Eh, 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 eh. Say, hi. Hi. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? How's he sound? Good. Good. What up, yo? What up, yo? <laughs> Sound good? Yeah. Good. So what were you saying? Uh, I was saying that, like, since I had... And hold the energy even more. I want you to be like an RSD instructor. I'm going to challenge you here. Hold the attention more. Okay. <laughs> yes. Since Rather I'm than controlling it, okay. let go more. Okay. Like, when I speak, I really let go. Rather than trying to control it. <laughs> Uh, since I had to work for like all and do this go things. go like this go since since do it louder like me since I I had, had to to work work good hard <laughs> good. for everything that I had to like achieve that just gave me the tools that I needed to like do this and like get out of my comfort zone every fucking time because it was so weird like people were saying five years ago like oh my god you can't hold eye contact and like talk two sentences with a girl and after a while it was kind of funny because all like three four years later girls that were mocking me years say ago, girls that were mocking me girls that were mocking me girls that were mocking me Girls that were mocking me. Good, keep going. We're saying that, oh my God, you have to show me how you get along with girls so well now. Because years ago, you were a fucking loser, and now you don't seem like one. Well, at least kind of like. Say, years ago, you were a loser. 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 Good. Good vocal exercise. <laughs> yeah. I'm also reprogramming him to, to realize how ridiculous that stuff is. A loser! <laughs> like, I've been called so many names that, like, the name calling doesn't affect me. And even when I was in bed with girls, I would be like, how does it feel to be doing it with the half cripple guy? <laughs> I actually do that with the balding. It's weird that we yeah. great minds think alike. I'm often like, I'm balding. I'm like, you're with a bald old man. What would your dad say? And shit like that. I do that quite a lot. Even like when we would like go to restaurants and stuff like that with stairs, I would say like, okay, I'll see you in like five, ten minutes if that's, <laughs> if that's possible. But like, it was a good mindset that I cultivated over the years, I think. Because like, if I hadn't, I would always have this mindset that like, 
I have this disease and I'm not good enough and like this will not happen because like why would she choose me if she can choose a guy who can get upstairs in 20 seconds? And that's the mindset right there. It's like, well, if she could get a guy at six feet, why would she take a guy at five nine? It's that same crippling mentality. When in reality, they're so caught in their own insecurities that if you're just good male energy and then you're kind of just there, they forget about it. And, Oftentimes. And uh, like for me, I realized that there's always gonna be someone better than you at everything, at everything. Like, you can never be good enough if like you can there's always someone better so like if you think that a like if that was my mindset like they could go out with like the tall guys because i'm kind of short as well but like they could go out with tall guys they could go out with guys with like perfect hair and perfect noses and like maybe even like they could go with the blondes because like in turkey where i'm from they usually like the blondes more because they're more unconventional yeah mm. they're different I look so cliche Turkish and like, why would they choose me when they had like the other options? But after a while, it was kind of fun to at least cultivate that mindset. And that's why I kind of wanted to come and share. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you very much for sharing that. And, it, and he, but here's what's even crazy, right? It's like, wait, because you own it, it's like you're not having trouble walking because you own it. Yeah. But as soon as he doesn't own it, what does he become? Oh, uh, just some pathetic cripple who everybody feels bad for and because they feel bad they ignore him because they don't even mentally want to deal with it but when he's just cool and owns it and he doesn't care and he's just a cool guy you just view him as another cool guy you want to be friends with it's weird how it works like if you're bold you have a shaved head but you're just cool nobody you think you think anybody doesn't want to be friends with like you know Jeff Bezos the owner of Amazon because he has a shaved head Right? You know, you're just like, oh, he's cool. I mean, obviously, he's the owner of Amazon as well. But the point is, like, if somebody's just outgoing and cool and fun or chill or at peace themselves, people want to be friends with them. But, but see, like, take the thing, like, like, with you. So what is it? You have trouble walking, I take it? Uh, it's like a neurological motor disease that, like, Got it. Uh, the muscle contracts, but it doesn't, like, loosen up enough in time. So it takes me, like, 10, 15 stairs to get up to, like, normal human speed. Yeah. Okay, okay, so let's put it this way. If you care that you have it, and it, look, everybody cares, yeah. but, it, but if you don't own it, then say that we're gonna be friends, you become that guy who is like, well, I gotta be friends with him because he's got this thing, but really it's kind of a downer when I'm around him because I have to think about it and I feel bad for him. But if you own it and you don't give a shit, then you, you, you outstrip that paradigm, you outframe it, and all of a sudden you're just the guy. It be, because if you don't care, we don't care. Yeah, it's kind of funny because like when I care, I wouldn't go up like to the classrooms like the to write stuff. And that was the time when people made really fun of me when I was kind of avoiding them as I kind of become became more comfortable with it. People started to actually not give a shit about that and not mock me, which I found kind of funny. Like I didn't know th at the time why all of this happened. But like when I look deep into it, of course, like because maybe like I love being like crippled and I love that I have this disease because like it's made me just so strong because at an early age, like from age six onwards, every day was like, oh, look at that guy. Like he can't walk. Why doesn't he play with us? Because he can't walk or he can't run. Like I sucked at sports until I did like the 300, 400 squats a day when I was like, 11 onwards and I went I actually made it to the basketball team which was I don't know they probably wow. had a bad one <laughs> <laughs> like they I was probably the most unathletic guy because of the condition but the coach like kind of liked to play me because I did give it my all and he said that I had this rare like sports IQ kind of thing so I could kind of mask my shitty athletic ability with kind of being more like the brainy player. Like in every sport that's in every field, there's a lot of guys that just do it because they have the high IQ and they give a lot of shit. And even though they're not maybe the most technically gifted. Mm -hmm. And I'd say like even me learning game, that's what I had to do too. And coming up having like this light level autism and having no ability to relate, or at least very minimal, you know, it pushed me further. So I'd say it's not like, I wouldn't say like for me, I wouldn't say like, I like, 
growing up in this social dark cloud. I like that I had that. I wouldn't say that, but I can objectively recognize that, that growing up with something that made it harder forced me to try harder and I could be honest with myself and say I never would have, realistically, I probably never would have tried harder if it weren't for that. And then you add this, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you add this other layer where you recognize that most people are so caught up in these petty little concerns. Like, okay, take me like reputationally, right? Go do a Google of me someday, see what turns up. You'll be like, holy shit, dude. Like, it's pretty crazy, right? Like, if you see me in the media or any of this stuff, and most people, when I see them crying over the reputation because somebody, like, talk bad on them, I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, unless you've got global press making up all sorts of wild lies about you, shut the fuck up. Like, really? You're hurt by that? Like, I've got to the point where, you know, sometimes we'll see, like, new crazy articles come out, and people will start texting me, and they'll be like, dude, are you okay? And I'm like, what do you mean am I okay? They're like, dude, that article. And I'm like... It's just an article. I mean, it's just some, some fucking clown wrote a piece. They didn't research it. They know nothing about it. They're just making clickbait. And people will literally say, are you okay? But I forget that that would be a negative. I'm actually excited about the article because maybe more people will find out about RSD. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, just spell the fucking website name right. Put a hyperlink to my domain. Put a video link in. <laughs> so... You know, and, but, it's, but, it's not, but it's not that like, I like that that happened, but I can recognize when I see other people getting so burnt up over like, you know, somebody like not liking them or something, I'm like, you look like you're in a lot of pain now. I kind of like that I kind of, I sort of just had to go through that at like a rapid, intense rate, get over it, and then I got to get on with my life. Whereas you're kind of stuck in that. So like for yourself, when you see other people stuck in like maybe being made fun of or caring too much what people think of them or feeling bad for themselves, it's not that you like what you're dealing with, but you can objectively recognize that if you didn't have that, that you'd be kind of stuck in this, in this weird thing. Like those playmates that are like, I don't have quite the perfect boob job. And it eats at them. They're being eaten alive by low vibration energy by this and experiencing pain, even though objectively their life would seem easier or better, subjectively the way that they are experiencing life. Because remember, li part of life is objectively how it plays out, but so much of life is subjectively how you experience it. And subjectively, sometimes people who have it all are actually in more pain. So, you know, sometimes people who have been given the most are in the most pain because they didn't get the evolutionary pressure. So when something bad happens to you or you have a shortcoming, something you're insecure about, at the same time, that insecurity, when severe enough, can actually push you to a new paradigm where you're forced to just get over it. And that's why many of the, when, many of the most secure guys of themselves I've ever met are the shortest. Like, fuck, dude, I'm five foot two. I don't have time to be insecure. Let's go pimp it. Let's go get laid. <laughs> Just name out, I'd like you guys shout out a couple. I'm just gonna ask each, a couple of you guys what your, in, your deepest insecurities are. What's your biggest insecurity? Just yell and yell it. Okay, I'll start here, okay? You think about it, I'll start here. Biggest insecurity, yell it. Skinny! Too skinny. You're pretty fucking skinny. Weird. How about you? Uh, not lean enough. Dude, you're in such good shape. Yeah. I'm looking at you going, this guy's in the shape of a god. And you, like, dude, you're jacked. C come up here, show them, a sh okay. I mean, unless you're not, and I'm just like not seeing this. It's good. Okay, look at this. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, he's, he's, his lower ab is missing. Yeah. Oh God, sit down. Oh God, take that, take that four pack with giant arms out of here, you chubby man. Get some ephedrine, all right. No, you, you look amazing, by the way. This is the most absurd thing, okay, go ahead. Uh, acne. You know, I didn't even notice that you had acne. Yeah. I see it now. I didn't even notice. You have a great smile. How about yourself? Uh, speech impediment. I've been hanging out with you on boot camp for three days. I didn't even know you have a fucking speech impediment. <laughs> it's all like subconscious. Not like I've been with this guy for three days on boot camp. You're here now. Yeah. I've been one on one basically with this guy for three fucking days. You have a speech impediment? I've gotten over a lot of it, but it's still like buried in my subconscious that I might stutter at a moment's notice. At any second, yeah. the stutter come out. Can I add something? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, uh, the reaction my father gave me when I said like, oh, I can't move and I can't do this, he was like, there are people that are in wheelchairs or that live in Syria that are getting killed every day, so you should be maybe grateful that you have good parents, loving parents, that, and you can be like 95% normal, so. It's always mm -hmm. a good shift in perspective. 
like he gave it to me hard always mm. which was pretty good actually i didn't respect that when i was a child but like i do respect that now but like when you just look at it because there are some people who are just living horrible lives and it's always good to see like oh i'm short but at least i'm not in the danger of getting bombed or killed by some terrorist organization or anything yeah i mean look everybody struggles things my firstborn son vincent is is properly autistic and he's really good looking kid and he's really fun but he'll have to deal with that as he gets older right some guys are like oh you know i wish i was better looking vincent is like a male model but he'll struggle with social skills his whole life so everybody struggles with different things and you know you want to be appreciative for what you have what's one of your insecurities uh, i've actually had a speech Okay, so you've been on boot camp with me for three days. <laughs> this is like the weirdest boot camp. Less control and you have to focus on it. Everybody has invisible yeah. speech. What the fuck is this boot camp? Is this the speech impediment boot camp that I don't know is happening? And now it's over? Is that I didn't even know? Yeah, insecurity. I lost my finger when I was young. You're missing a finger? Where? You're missing a toe. <laughs> you can't even see it. Inexperience. Inexperience. Serious. Pretty good insecurity. Go get some experience. What's your neck? What's yours? I got a really stiff neck and I have to shift it a lot. You have a stiff neck. <laughs> wow. It was a, it's like a motor tick. It develops to a stiff neck, so it's like I gotta adjust a lot. You will never get laid, my friend. How about you? <laughs> you have a big nose? Two. Okay, come up to the front. <laughs> okay. So, come here. Okay. A lot this is actually a, a pretty much a traditionally good-looking guy that many guys in this room wish they look like. And he's like, "Ear near, near, near." Okay, go sit down. Okay. All right, insecurity? Uh, yeah. Shy. You're shy. What? No, shy. You know, when I talk to you, okay, come up here. Are you serious? I, I was. I was. Wait. Okay. When, when I hear it, like... Say hi to the crowd. Hi. Okay. When I saw him, I actually thought he looked like some cocky, rich kid little shit when I saw him in the free tour and that he was, like, cocky. I had no idea that you're shy. Now go sit down. Okay. How about you? I have a hard time believing people can love me. Really? Okay. Come up to the front. <laughs> okay. Tell everybody how you feel unloved. I have a hard time believing people can actually love me. You. Because you're a bad man and unworthy of love. <laughs> <laughs> now go sit down. I don't love you either. Go. <laughs> okay. Now when you see him say that, I'm, I'm teasing here, okay? Me and him know each other. When you see him say that, is your mind like spinning? Like, what, really? You see that? So everybody deals with stuff. And what you'll find is the more personal it is, the more universal it is. Say this with me. The more personal it is, the more universal it is. I'll say that one more time. The more personal it is, the more universal it is. So insecurities in general, you'll find that you have it and you think it's just you and a lot of people have it. So it's not that the insecurities aren't rational. It's not that you can't work to improve them. But at the same time, try to focus on being secure with yourself now still taking action to improve you know keep squatting keep doing things to improve it yeah of course yeah but then at the same time keep moving forward and realize that if you can kind of get out of that paradigm yeah you always have some insecurities here or there get out of the paradigm because look you'd think that when you make a million dollars you'd be secure with yourself when you make a million dollars you move to a richer neighborhood there's always a guy making 10 million <laughs> when you start making 10 million sounds like a lot right there's always a guy making 50 million 100 million now you're making 100 million a year and now you're playing with the big boys and there's these guys called old money where they have intergenerational wealth and you can't even make enough money in one lifetime to compete and then you just drive yourself crazy and because your brain synaptic pathways have built a highway all the way to that to that feeling of i'm not enough even when you have the 100 million you're still not enough so you want to build a synaptic pathway to complete self-acceptance while simultaneously enjoying taking massive action to improve yourself for the joy of the process itself and for the enjoyment of evolving. Got it, guys? Yep. Is evolving fun? Yes. Is taking action fun? Yes. Can you start being secure with yourself now? Yes. Okay, all right, give me a hand. We're going to get on the next bit. Thank you, guys. Okay. Amazing.
Thanks, brother. <laughs> That's dope. Great contribution. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>